factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Hey, this is Mad Matt for Budget Boosting. We're going to talk about compression checking today. Compression test of an engine is often required when you suspect one of your cylinders or all of your cylinders to be bad. For example, say we got this RB20 engine here. Pretty rare engine. You can't find these things too often in the States. They're in Japan on most Nissan cars overseas. It's a Skyline engine, but it's in this Nissan 240SX over here. And somebody just did an engine swap. However, we want to find out if it's a good engine because there's many things you can do to test a good engine without tearing it apart. And a compression test is one of the tests you can do to find out if an engine has good compression and will fire on you when you have fuel and spark. Like say for example, you checked your fuel, you're getting fuel. You checked your spark, you're getting spark. And your engine isn't starting. Well, if you don't have enough compression, your engine will not start. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do a compression test and narrow it down. The limitations for an RB20 engine is 165 PSI per cylinder. That's a perfect known good engine. Well, we have a cold engine. Normally compression tests are done on engines that are warmed up and at operating temperature. That way you get a higher, you know, you get your high readings. Now, 165 on a warm, known, good, new RB20 engine. So since this is a cold engine, if this is a perfect en engine, I would expect maybe 120 PSI or readings over 100 PSI because expansion and Heating up an engine makes a big difference on compression testing. All right, the first thing you do when you want to do a compression test, you remove all your spark plugs. All the spark plugs are removed already. Number two, you need a compression test kit. And you can get these compression test kits at all your major auto parts stores, AutoZone, Craig, and O'Reilly's, all those guys. And it basically has a gauge, different appendages to test out different kinds of spark plugs, and the spark plug we're using, the, the test thing, is this, is this matches our spark plug. So that's the compression test appendage we're going to use today. All right, first thing you do is you choose the cylinder you're going to work on, which is going to be cylinder one number first. We're going to use the cylinder number one to test. So you slowly screw the compression test inside the cylinder number one. And you do it to about a finger tightness because it's got an O-ring to seal it. Once you got her in real good, then you hook it to the gauge. And you need a really good strong starter and a battery to do a compression test. All right. And another thing, once we do the compression test, we're going to do it for a few seconds and take our highest reading and write it down here for everybody to see. And the cylinders should be no more than 10 PSI away from each other if you have a good engine. Like say for example you see 120, 30, 60, 20, you got a bad engine. But if you see something like a, on a cold engine that we're doing, 100, 105, 103, 102, 101, 100, okay we're looking at a good engine. So that's what we're looking for. Alright, let's do the first cylinder number one. <laughs> That looks to be 140 PSI. That looks good, right? 140 PSI on cylinder number one. Relieve the pressure. Next cylinder. All right, we got cylinder number two ready for the compression test. Here we go. Okay, that one reads 140 PSI as well. So far it looks like we got a good strong engine. Considering this is a cold engine and we're getting 140 PSI, that'll easily be right on that new engine's limitations with a warm engine. All right, we're going to do the compression test on cylinder number three. Here we go. Okay, stop. Looking like 130. About 10 PSI variation. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. Now, if we would have had something like 70 or 80, then we'd have a reason to be concerned, but 130, 140, that's, that's looking good within 10 PSI. We are now ready for the compression test on cylinder number four. Here we go. And stop. 
another 140. Good reading. Very strong engine. All right, we're going to go for cylinder number five next. Here goes cylinder number five. Call that 125. That one would be, hmm, yeah, there's a little bit of variation there. That one would be one I questioned. This one had difficulty difficulty threading into the the Hela coil, so I suspect that's the reason why this compression reading is different. Okay, next number six. All right, here goes cylinder number six. Took a while to build that pressure, but still reached 140. All right, that's cylinder six. We just finished our compression test, and I would call that an overall success. Again, this is an RB20 DET engine. Modified a bit, and it still needs some work before it can be ready to run, but it's gonna really run hard when we get done. It's got some good numbers. All right, well, thank you for watching us at Budget Boosting on our compression test. It helps you narrow down problems that you can find on engines to you know, narrow down why an engine doesn't run. A very important test. Usually you pay quite a bit for this kind of a test done at a shop. So you just save yourself some money. These kits usually cost around 40, 50 bucks and an hour of labor on most shops is close to 100 bucks an hour. So you can save yourself a lot of, a lot of trouble and a lot of money by doing it yourself. Well, thanks for watching us do this compression check. And remember, if you like us, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our channel, and remember, knowledge is power, it's horse.